Hello everybody, my name is Ohad Despande, and in this video I want to introduce you guys to the concept of uh, reinforcement learning as well as kind of formalize some of the problems that we'll be discussing uh, a bit later and then, you know, kind of move, as we move on throughout the course we'll learn about different ways that we can kind of solve these reinforcement learning algorithms so we'll uh, discuss particularly like things like value iteration and, um, and Q learning and then we'll kind of move on to the more uh, deep reinforcement learning stuff with uh, deep Q networks and then kind of some of the advancements with uh, with that. But before we get to that, we have to discuss, re before we get to deep reinforcement learning, we actually have to discuss reinforcement learning. Uh, so, and before we discuss reinforcement learning, we actually have to discuss what does it even mean to have a game? What is reinforcement learning uh, to begin with? And so, uh, to kind of frame this problem, uh, think about, let's think about playing a little game. And so we're going to be a really simple game. So, Suppose that I have a little map here. So think about um, think about playing a little adventure game uh, with a robot. And so here's our map. It's not a very big map, but it is nevertheless a, a map. So the light gray squares are traversable, but the dark gray square in the middle uh, is not. You can't cross it. Think of it as like a valley or a or a, or a mountain or something. We can't go. We can't cross it. And uh, but we know that green is good and red is bad. So there's like some treasure over at um, green but uh, red is kind of like a fire pit that we don't want to fall into so you know, the goal is we want our robot which is this little uh, star here we want a robot to get to the to find the most efficient uh, path to the, uh, the the green stuff or the, the green square the reward the treasure and we want to avoid at all costs the, uh, the, the fire pit and um, one interesting problem here is we're gonna make kind of like a real world uh, assumption here is that in in the sense that our motions are what we call non-deterministic. What that means is if we go to the right, we are not going to go. We might not go to the right. And um, this, this you know this does follow real world assumptions because if you think of something like robotics, um, if you try to make your robot move to the left or rotate to the left, it's not going to perfectly rotate ninety degrees to the left. There's going to be some wiggle room here, and so we're kind of also trying to model that in our um, we kind of model that real world, a uh, real world assumption into our into our reinforcement learning. So when we move, when we say, "Hey, robot, move to the right," we might not move to the right the entire time. Although there's going to be a very high probability that we do. So maybe if we say, "Oh, let's move to the right," maybe there's like a ninety-five or ninety percent chance that we do may take the correct action. But maybe there's a ten percent chance that oh, we like overshoot and actually move to the to um, you know to behind us or, or down or you know there's always th that um, uh, that chance so these motions are non-deterministic so we don't we say move to the right we don't fully know whether or not it's going to move uh, to the right so we call a non-deterministic and so the quickest or, or objective is to find the quickest most efficient path uh, to the goal state um, but we, we don't know what that path really is and so what we can do is we can try to take moves and so let me just like try making some moves. So here I'll move to the right, and you know we indeed move to the right. Here I'll move to the uh, the right, and then you know this will work out. And if I keep moving, eventually I'll hit this green state, and I'll know that ah oh, this is a good reward. I'm, I'm I found the treasure. I have a high reward, so this is good. So I've learned that you know going through this path, this will this will be good. Okay, but now suppose that I you know somehow end up in the fire pit. That's not a good reward. And so as I keep playing over and over again, I'll learn that the green square is going to be a good reward and the red square is going to be a, a bad reward. These are things that I might not know um, at the beginning, but as I, you know, these are what we call end states, which kind of signify the end of the game. You know, as I keep playing, I'll start to learn where the good rewards are and what paths to take that will get me to these high reward, uh, high reward states. And so here we are back at uh, the beginning and so we have to kind of formalize this problem uh, a little bit here uh, because if we're going to try to use algorithms and um, computer science to kind of solve this we have to have a bit more of a formal understanding uh, of our problem and so what we're going to do is this thing called a Markov decision process and so we're going to discuss these first and value iterations kind of a way to solve these Markov decision processes before we get on to uh, before we get on to Q learning so there are a couple things that consist of a uh, of a Markov decision process. 
So we're going to kind of discuss all of these, and then we'll kind of move on to uh, uh, Q-learning. This is kind of the formal definition uh, of our of, of our problem. So first thing that we need is a set of states, and a state is just some possible all a state represents a configuration of our board of, of our you know if we're playing a, a, a game of chess then the the state is one possible configuration and if I move like my uh, if I move a rook or something then that just become that become a new state so in the case of our game um, the location of the robot is really the only variable so everything else here is is fixed except the location of the robot is the only variable so if I move my robot to the right that's a new state so you can kind of figure out how many possible states uh, there are, and just know that in much larger games like chess or um, uh, something like that, we can have you know, a very, very large number of states. So playing, think, trying to do reinforcement learning with chess is a bit uh, is a bit of a challenge, and we, you know, there are other ways to you know solve this. And then you know that that's these are just board games. Wait until you get to things like games like Atari games, like you might be familiar with, like Missile Control or um, uh, Brick. Or break breakout, or um, you know, Pac-Man, or something like that. Um, these Atari games, they they can have a lot of different states, and so it might not even be tractable to use something like a Markov decision process. But we'll get to that um, when we get too deep reinforcement learning. But first of all, we have to discuss Markov decision processes. So we have a set of states, and this S S is all possible configurations of the game. We also have a start state, which is what's the initial configuration here. In this case, for our um, game here is the initial configuration. The robot is in the bottom left square. You know, for something like chess, we have an initial board configuration. Each piece kind of starts at the beginning. Same for Pac-Man. You know, we have all the pellets are there. Pac-Man starts in a fixed spot each time. The ghosts are all in, in a spot each time. We have some initial state. The next thing we uh, have for um, for a Markov decision process is a set of actions that represents all of the different things that our agent can take. And in fact, the, and our agent is just something that our agent is really something that just takes an action in it's in a particular state and we take an action and then we end up in another state so in this case our robot is the agent or whoever is playing the game or a participant of the game here so our robot is um, our robot is the agent and there are a couple actions that a robot can take our robot can go up our robot can go to the left can go to the right and can go down so those are the possible actions for our robot and maybe we have another action that says oh well a robot can just not move Right, and so we have one, two, three, four, five possible uh, actions here. And you know, some games we might want to make our uh, robot move each time, our agent move each time. Okay, so we discussed these things, and then we have a transition function. And this transition function tells us the probability of being in a particular state S, taking a particular action A, and ending up in another state S prime. And the reason that we even have this transition function, remember, is because our environment is non-deterministic. So if I tell my robot, hey, let's move to the right, there's no 100% guarantee that the robot is going to move to the right. Like I said, it may overshoot or there may be some kind of error, um, and there's some kind of inherent error in these real world scenarios. And so it might not always move to the right. So uh, this transition function is trying to encode that. So if I have some state S, here's my state, and my action is move to the right, and I can figure out how many possible ways I can, you know, all the possible states that I can end up in. You know, uh, there's some other constraints in here in the sense that a robot can't teleport. We can only move to adjacent uh, states here. So, you know, the probability that we're in this state, we move to the right, and we end up in the state over here is going to be zero because a robot, like I said, a robot can't teleport. That's another constraint. But, you know, there are other things that we can do with, you know, more realistically, if we had a robot in this scenario and we move to the right, the probability that we actually go right is going to be fairly high, like maybe like 90% of the time we actually move to the right. But maybe 5% of the time we move up and 5% uh, of the time we, we move down. And so that kind of, that, that transition function kind of encodes that uh, non-determinism in our environment. That's kind of the point of the, uh, the transition function. It's going to become important later on, uh, later on as well. And then finally, we have this reward function. And you can see it's kind of similar to our transition function. So this reward function tells us the reward of being in a particular state, taking an action, and ending up in another state. And this is a reward. And kind of the whole goal is to um, you know, maximize our reward. And so if I were instead, if my robot were in, let's go back here. 
my robot were in this state, here's my state S, and I go to take to the right and I end up in this green square, then I'm going to have a high reward. And that's exactly what I want. That's what my reward function is going to tell me. But instead, if I end up in this state here, I'm going to have like maybe a negative reward, and that's going to be very bad. And so the reward function is what we're going to use to kind of figure out what states are good and what states are bad. And so we know all of this information, actually. We know uh, all of this information. We know all the possible states. We know the initial state. We know all the actions we can take. We know these probabilities, and we know the rewards. And so we have all of this information at our disposal, and so now we can start building algorithms around this that um, you know that can help solve our problem. Of we want to get, we want to figure out where the high reward states are and find the most efficient path uh, to them. So another kind of keyword I want to explain before we wrap up is uh, the goal is to find what's called an optimal policy, and the policy essentially just tells us uh, which action to take in a particular state that will lead us to the maximum uh, reward in the future. So uh, what that, well, the policy is just a function of the state that we're in. So let me give you, uh, let's go back here to do another example. So if we're in this state, the policy, if we, after we've trained a reinforcement learning agent, the policy will say, hey, go to the right, and that will give you us the maximum uh, reward. You know, and the policy, if we were in this state, the policy would say, hey, don't go up. You know, or go up and don't go to the right, and that will give us you know, that will end up with the maximum uh, future reward. And so you know that's what the policy, and that's the kind of whole goal of reinforcement learning is to figure out this policy. So we kind of go over here. So the goal is to find that optimal policy that'll tell us to take the best action to take. And uh, one other thing that I want to discuss real quickly is this thing called discounting, and that's denoted by uh, the section of the Greek symbol uh, gamma. And at each time step, we have this notion of discounting, and kind of the intuition behind this is that we prefer to have rewards sooner uh, rather than later. And you'll see that when we get into the actual value iteration algorithm, this discounting factor is actually kind of crucial because it helps uh, our, our values, our expected rewards, converge. And so we know which is the best path uh, to take. And so we have this kind of notion of uh, discounting as well. And so we'll get to all this stuff when we discuss value iteration, but I just kind of wanted to introduce this. Uh, this topic here. Okay, so just to do a really quick uh, recap, we just kind of introduced uh, the notion of reinforcement learning, and uh, we kind of formalized it by discussing this Markov decision. Uh, we kind of formalized our game as being a Markov decision process where you have a set of all possible states and a start state. We have a set of all possible actions that we can take, and we have a transition function that is um, kind of encodes this non determinism in our uh, agent and our environment. And then finally, we have a reward function that tells us. You know the reward of, or you know the overall reward. And ideally, that's what we're trying to get to. We're trying to get to a policy that gives us the maximum, uh, the maximum reward. And the policy is just like the best action that we can take when we're in a particular state to maximize the the, the future uh, expected reward. And finally, we discuss this notion of this discounting factor, where uh, we want to basically multiply a, a small factor gamma at each kind of uh, iterate or each at each step of the game or at each action. So that we can, the intuition might is to prefer rewards. We want to have rewards sooner in the game rather than uh, later in the game because then um, you know the rewards kind of have this notion of decaying or, or discounting, and this will actually help with convergence when we get to uh, when we get to value iteration. So we, we want to get rewards as soon as possible in our game. And that's kind of what this discounting factor is going to help us uh, help us do. So this kind of covers Markov decision processes, and so um, in the next few videos we're going to be discussing. An, an algorithm for solving this uh, using called value iteration and so we'll discuss that actually uh, in the next video.